Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Timster. Today I'm going to be going over part 8 in the Project FPS tutorial series. So in the last part we went ahead and set up a damage script so that our AI here can do damage to the player and so that he can take damage from the player. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out part 7 so you'll be up to date. But apart from that, I'll get straight on into this tutorial. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go over here and move this across. Now what we need to do is select the first state here, then hold down shift, select the second, third, and the death state as well. Now what we need to do is for all of the connected animations, we need to add one to the priority. So one, like so, one for this one, and one for that one, and we want to do this to all of them that aren't the hit animation. So, as you can see here, this one is hit, so we'll leave it at zero. Shoot to one as well. Forward walk uh, to three. Um, run to two. And get up to one. And then just set it back to one. So if I press P here, you'll notice that the AI just walks forward and doesn't do anything. So what we want to do is if our AI can see the player directly, but there's no cover, we just want him to shoot at the player. So to do that, first of all, I'm going to select the ray here and make it invisible. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to add a shooting animation. So this is going to be on state 2 when he hasn't found any cover yet. And what we want to do is go over to our head sensor. So let me just move this across. We want to go over to the head sensor here and we want to shoot a ray from that. So once this ray evaluates as positive, that means our AI can see the player. So to do that, let's go ahead, go over here, put in player, and make the range something, I don't know, like 100. So I'm going to select the head, hold down shift, select the AI movement, and then making sure you're on state 2, I'm going to go add an and, and join it in like so. Then I'm going to also set this on a true pulse and maybe how often we want our player here to check if he can still see. So let's go ahead and join this and here with the forward walk fire animation. So control and up arrow in this view and join them together. So forward walk fire. Now this here is 60 frames long. So for about one second our enemy AI will be shooting. So control down arrow to go back and let's go over here and see how many times he shoots within that time frame. So within this animation he shoots 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 roughly. So what we want is our shooting here to shoot out 8 times. So we can do that by setting it to a frequency of 8. So let's go over at array, negative y axis, make it 200 or something. And then also, let's just make it detect player. And if that's true, we want it checking eight times per second, which is how often we shoot. Then what we want to do is add an and, and join this one uh, with this one down here. And from here, we want to send a message. So let's go over here, add ourselves a message. We want it to send to player. And it's just going to be hit. So now what we want to do is from this one here, we want to make our muzzle flare visible. So let's hold down shift, uh, select muzzle flare. That is already used, so let's go over to the state 3 here, and select the pin for both, go back to state 2, join here, visible. So let's put an AND for not AND, and actually we have this in the wrong one. This one here is meant to be in the first one. So that makes it easy, as we only have to join this one in, and then join it up there. So now what we also want to do is we want this here to be on a tap, so that this constantly gets toggled on and off. So if we press B, uh, you'll notice he'll play the shooting animation. You'll notice that his muzzle flare does stay on though. I select the muzzle flare here, and go over to state 1, and what we want it to do is we want it to always set the muzzle flare to false. So at an end, and make it always invisible. All right, cool. 
So we also will select the pin on this and we'll also put it into the death state. So just in case, uh, go ahead here and make it invisible. Now one more thing you can do is if you go over to the text editor here and you'll see we have enemy shoot. So over here uh, you'll notice that we have if our bullet is positive uh, we'll send a hint message to the player. However the AI here can't actually really hit any ground or sort of make any dust or something pop up. So if you'd like to you can go ahead and put an else if uh, basically just copy and paste this line here uh, and then replace this with uh, the property ground or something or whatever you put on the obstacles in the way so when your player here is hiding behind cover the AI will still shoot but instead of hitting him you'll have lots of dust and stuff spawning in so I'll just quickly cover it now just in case you guys want to add it uh, basically you'll check for the property and then if it's true uh, spawn is equal to scene.add object so in here you want your uh, dust cloud or maybe you have an empty that spawns in lots of other bits and pieces at once. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and put that in. Maybe I'll just call it uh, hit empty. So for now let's just do own as this will be easiest and then uh, for the lifetime well if it's a spawner you probably don't need more than 5 frames but if it's a just dust cloud by itself maybe you want 60. And so now what you want to do is uh, spawn dot world position position is equal to bullet dot hit uh, position. So I'm not actually going to do that, uh, but there's the option if you guys want to edit. Um, I just want to keep the AI as simple as possible. So one more thing we have to do is make sure that our AI here, when we duplicate him lots, we don't want him colliding with himself. So to do that, let's select our dynamic object here, scroll down, and you'll notice down here we have a uh, few properties. The most important being the collision group and the collision mask. So most objects are just collision group 1, and they can collide with all other groups. So what we're going to do on this one here is set it to collision group 2, and then I'm going to here just click the first one, hold down shift, and select all the other ones that aren't 2. So this means that our object here cannot collide with anything on group 2, which is itself. So now we'll be able to have multiple copies of this, and they won't sort of collide and glitch out with each other. So now comes the harder part, which is getting our sort of player here to do damage to our AI. So to do that, first of all, uh, I'm just going to select my camera, press Alt-R, get rid of the rotation, RX90, numpad 7, and let's just move it roughly inside our cube here, uh, in the middle, yeah that's fine, and then what we're going to do is, let's just uh, move it forward a bit, change it to global, so what we can do now is go ahead add a mouse sensor movement, and in here add a python script, so if you've got uh, higher than 2.72 you can use the mouse actuator, which already has a mouse look script in it, uh, but otherwise you'll have to add in your own one. So I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. All right, and so then I'll just put it in here, mouse look py.text. So we want, first of all, a mouse and array. This one is going to be left button. So when we tap, we're going to add an and, and we want to join this in. So this here is going to be when we hit enemy. And let's make the range 100. It's going to be positive y axes. And I guess it'll be constantly checking when we tap. So uh, let's just go ahead and add a new one here and just put in bullet hits dot py and copy and paste from one of the other ones. Control C, uh, bullet hit, paste it in. We won't need scene. If ray, cmt dot sensors ray. And then we have our mouse sensor as well. So let's just call it click is equal to cmt dot sensors. And it's called mouse one. So if ray dot positive and click dot positive. So now what we want to do is just check if the property hit is in our object. So if hit in ray dot hit object, then what we want to do is set ray dot hit object hit is equal to true. Now what we have to do with our camera here is go into local and you'll notice that it's also on the negative Z. So we're actually shooting in the wrong direction. 
So let's set our ray here to be on a true pulse. Now one more thing we also have to do is, as you notice, we only have the damage taking script. We only have it on state 3. So what we need to do is go ahead and copy it and put it on state 2 and state 1 as well. So let's go ahead, add another Python controller, join it into always and also join it in to our hit animation. And then from here, uh, go ahead and select damage. All right, and now what we need to do is set that one to be state 2. Add another one, this will be state 1. So join in always, join in hits, choose damage, and state 1. So now if we press P and we click in the right spot, then there we go, we've managed to kill our AI. However, the animations for the death don't seem to be playing. So let's go over here to our death state and select our death animation. So this one all the way over here. And what we want to do is uh, the animations here, let's make them priority zero. So they always play regardless of anything else. And also uh, on the always, let's just make it true pulse. So it's constantly checking. So now what we also want to do is perhaps give them a bit more time. So uh, let's go over to our death state here and just crank up the delay maybe to 240. Now just to double check, um, let's go ahead and sort of wipe all the previous animations as well. So uh, hold down shift, select 1, 2, and 3, so we have all states selected, and then into the death animation here, we want to join everything in. So enemy aim, body death, uh, basically all the ones we've used, so crouch idle, uh, we want duck as well. So now what we want to do is import them all in and disable them and then activate only the death animations to ensure that they play. So let's go over to our death animation here. Actually, go over to enemy shoot. So if we scroll all the way up the top here, uh, we have our animations here. So control C to copy, death animation, and just paste them up the top. Now we don't actually have the magazine animation, so let's hold down shift, select the magazine, and also join in that animation. So on the death state, uh, go ahead and we want to join in that one, so select all the states, and death animation, oh, uh, this window, control up arrow, and join this one all the way up to the top. Okay, control down arrow, back over here. We have duck, we have hit, I don't think we have hit, so let's quickly input it in. Right, import and hit, and then also we need, uh, I think, walk forward. So uh, walk forward, and then also walk forward and fire. So walk forward, and then press enter, next line, copy and paste this one, and put fire on both sides. So run c1t.actuators run c1t.deactivate and then copy and paste the first name the good thing about doing this is we'll be able to copy and paste the whole section uh, for the second part but copy and paste this and then copy and paste the name Alright, so now we have all of those, let's go ahead and copy and paste them, put them in the second one. So if we go to the headshot here and turn off continue, and I guess just do the same for body shot as well, uh, then hopefully we should get it working. Now because we have this on a true pulse here, you'll notice that when we do shoot and he plays a death animation, he'll usually play it twice, just because we have it constantly going. So let's add an actuator under the enemy text rig, and it's just going to be normal, then here, add a NAND, uh, and then let's go over here, add two properties, just to make it simple, uh, call this one body, call this one head, 
and then in here if uh, I think body death was one of them and then we'll add another NAND, add another actuator this one's going to be for headshot so once that has finished playing for both of them uh, what we want to do is go over to uh, enemy AI if this one evaluates to true then set body death uh, which is over here body to true property over here assign and head to true so go over to our script here and what we want to do is under the death animation we want to make sure also on top of this that our uh, sort of properties here aren't set to true so and own body is equal to false oh no that's a headshot so and own head is equal to false and down here and own body is equal to false alright and so now hopefully that should work so if we press P and shoot at our player play a death animation and just lie there and then disappear. What you can do now is uh, go over and set him with all the pieces M, move to layer 2 and so now what you can do is go ahead and add a axes and on here what you can do is have an always make it something long so maybe 240 and you can get your empty here to constantly spit out our AI. So to do that uh, you want enemy um, enemy AI here now what we want to do is on our set position script here we want to also set our sort of points here uh, to be used and unused so we don't have lots of AI sitting in the same spot let's just copy and paste this so that and then do one equal sign and set it to two now what we also want to do is as you can see on our cover points here we want to make sure that it is assigned to two so we want it to be constantly doing that so true pulse and we're going to have to do that for each of them unfortunately so these four over here you could just do one and copy and paste it all over but because it's only what two clicks for each one I don't think it's going to be too bad so there we go that's half of them done already now what we can also do to make the screen less cluttered is you can go over to our sort of menu here, render panel at the start, turn off debug properties, and turn off physics visualization. So there we go guys, that's the end of this tutorial series. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a like or comment down below. Now I think there are still a couple bugs with our AI being able to find cover and stuff, uh, which is a little strange. But again, uh, AI in general can be very, very buggy. In regards to the whole tutorial series, the next part we'll be doing will be asset creation. So around this time of year, things might get a little bit hectic and stuff, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get onto that fairly soon. But maybe in the next few months or something, I might be able to get started on that. So yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.